Okay, we ready to go? Could everyone please turn off cell phones and electronic devices or silence them and rise for a moment of silence and pledge of allegiance. I understand Mary Pat worked for probation, and most of us didn't know that. So I'm going to say a few words and I'll go right up. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, I had the pleasure of being hired by Derek Miller in the probation department six and a half years ago. Worked here in the county government building for one week, and then it was closed from the hurricane. So uh, I think there were those in the probation department who blamed that on me. But uh, it was truly a pleasure to work with Derek, and one of my best memories, or one of the things I took away, was when I actually left the probation department after about 18 months, I think. I, I was promoted to another position. Um, he held an exit interview with me, which I thought was wonderful. So he took the time to find out what my thoughts about working in probation were, and uh, I just, I thought that was really excellent, so I really appreciated that. So it's uh, my pleasure, on behalf of County Executive Steve Newhouse, to present you with this certificate which reads, in recognition and heartfelt appreciation of your hard work and continued commitment to the residents of Orange County, congratulations on the celebration of 30 years of service with Orange County government. Thank you, so, thank you sir. Congratulations. Eric, on behalf of the legislature, it gives me great pleasure to present you with this 30-year pin. I've been with you for many of your 30 years, probably 24 of them. Um, you've done, you do a great job at public, public, excuse me, public safety. You're well presented. You, you speak so fast I can't keep up with you sometimes, but that's just your wealth of knowledge. You come from a good family. Your mother was a, the town clerk in the town of Montgomery for many years. Um, you, where do you live, on Browns Road? Yes. Yeah, that's Mike and Agnes Stocks. It's just for that. <laughs> Mention that. Yeah, yeah, Derek's got to be a very hard worker because I think I knocked on your door five or six times and never did see you at the door. So. <laughs> he does go to the golf course <laughs> once in a while. <laughs> <laughs> He's got a mind spot. <laughs> 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 I do it from here. Ben is the chairman of the Oversight Committee of Public Safety. So. Derek, I'll do it from here. Anytime uh, anybody asks Derek a question, you have to say, just give me the cliff notes because he knows so much about the answer. He could give you a, a three hour dissertation or a three minute dissertation. He's so knowledgeable in the area of probation, and I think we're really lucky to have Derek, the leadership in that position, because there's a, a lot of people out there on probation that, with various violations. Some of them are dangerous, some of them not so much. But Derek and his staff do a phenomenal job. Uh, we used to get tremendous reimbursement from the state, and now it seems to fall on us. So Derek has a lot of pressure on him to manage the budget as well. Uh, but his staff is excellent, and we're going to dump a lot more on you with all these new issues with uh, raising the age and such. So Derek's job gets tougher and tougher every day. Uh, we all talk about the opiate problem. Uh, Derek has to deal with that firsthand. Um, so thank you for your commitment to public safety and performance standards. It's a great job. I've been here working for the county years longer than I was on the earth before I started the job. Uh, 
Uh, but at the end of the day, uh, you know, I think it's the quality of the work, the quantity that always matters, and I really appreciate the effort the county puts in the support and information department. I want to thank the legislature, I want to thank the county executives, the new house, Harry, Wayne, and Mary Pat. Uh, I think it's been uh, an honor and a privilege to lead people to go out and face the frontline dangers every day. I want to thank my staff, most of all. Uh, there's anything that you can't do without good people. So thank you very much. Appreciate it. Signed up. That's happening. Okay. Four. First speaker, Marianne McDonald. Three new positions. Agenda items number two, three, four, two, five. Is it on? Yes, it is. Originally, I was prepared to speak to the 1224 Times Herald Record editorial full story calls for investigation, and that was the Valley News story. Unfortunately, this has come up that they want to hire three new positions to the tune of a few hundred thousand dollars. So I'm delaying my Valley View investigation speech till March, and I'll be speaking instead about the three positions. Okay. Um, oops, I the uh, Orange County Executive Steve Newhouse wants to create three positions, 140 for a director of tourism, 110 to 122 for economic development, and 43,000 for a uh, secretary. If you legislators should approve another faulty agenda item of Steve Newhouse, it will cost us, the taxpayers, a minimum of 293000 or a maximum of 305000 not including benefits and retirement. Please keep in mind, this is the same county executive that has made sure Orange County Union employees received 0% for years. Remember, Orange County was said to be in such a dire fiscal crisis. Word on the street is that the creation of these positions is nothing new for the New House administration. In fact, the acronym they use is FOS, Friends of Steve. Those are the individuals who are placed in these highly paid positions. For a time, Orange County had a hiring freeze. This hiring freeze then and now appears to only apply to rank and file real workers of Orange County. Please table this decision. Go talk to the rank and file workers at the County Department of Social Services, Valley View, and other departments. Ask how understaffed they are. Don't ask the commissioners of those departments. Ask the employees. Some will be afraid to tell you the truth for fear of reprisal. You'll have to talk to them and get there to be, to be anonymous. But do your research. Examine each department and do what the Orange County Chair historically, Mr. Brescia, has not wanted you to do. Ask questions about the budget. After all, this money that you are spending is not Newhouse's money, nor Brescia's money. It's the money of the Orange County taxpayers. Please ask why taxpayers were paying a longtime experienced tourism coordinator, Susan Habermail, $77,000 a year, and now that position in the new Lustig Newhouse form will cost $140,000 a year. Have you asked why? Or better yet, have you asked who? Do your homework. Do what the taxpayers are paying you to do. Stop being a rubber stamp for the Newhouse agenda. When making your decision, consider what Thomas, Je Thomas, uh, Thomas, oh my goodness, uh, Jefferson said. The purpose of government is to enable the people of the nation to live in safety and happiness. Government exists for the interests of the governed, not the governors. Send these positions back to committee for further research and questions. Please do not continue to waste taxpayers' money without full investigation about staffing levels Please at conclude. all county departments. Please, Please put conclude. Stop. Please, I am. One sentence. Let's put a stop to top-heavy creation of unnecessary government positions. Thank you. Next speaker, Virginia Scott, Cornwall, 22, 23, and 24 agenda items. Thank you. Um, I attended the uh, committee meeting uh, talking about these hires. And one of the things that prompted me to speak was legislature Slater Adu. 
when we talked about how the legislature players only interviewed one out of the six candidates. I'm troubled by that. Um, I did look up Mr. Brooks. Mr. Brooks is a real estate agent. He's a developer. So I want to ask the question in terms of qualifications. How can you have a real estate developer be in charge of our open space, conservation of land, and, and really, that's what I have. I have nothing personal, but I think you could do better. And I would like to know, and maybe I'll make this a point with Mr. Newhouse, 60 candidates, and this was the best. I'll go back to now um, item 23 and 24. I do remember in the campaign, and I did run for office, how Mr. Newhouse talked about the savings to taxpayers by these early retirement incentives. Wait. Why the big hires in grades 25 and 26? There is a wide range of qualifications. So someone from who graduates high school could be making six figures with eight years of experience. I'm concerned about that. Mr. Poor had made um, comments about, you know, how difficult it is to um, manage all this and this, these two positions are very important. Mr. Poor, in the general sector, in the population, general workers, there are a lot of employees, as a result of attrition, that take on more because there's no hiring. So I want to ask, why would you approve these kind of hires? Six figures, when you touted, uh, the county executive touted, the savings to taxpayers. This doesn't seem like it's savings to taxpayers. And I'll go back to 20, um, item 22. When I saw Mr. Brooks Chester, is his residence and that's his district. And, and that kind of bothers me too because I do know that that is also Mr. Newhouse's um, origin as well. Um, I'm asking you to table this. Um, I think there should be more information. If there were only one out of 60 candidates that this legislature has interviewed, please go back, do the right thing. I'm counting on you. Thank you. Okay, third speaker, Lorraine McNeil on number nine. Hello. Good afternoon, everyone. Mr. Chairman, honorable members of the legislature, thank you so much for your time today. I'm very happy that I was able to rearrange my schedule so that I could be here at 3.30 in the afternoon to meet with you. I do want to talk to you specifically about resolution number nine, and I'm going to ask you to vote no in this particular regard. The resolution states that it's to authorize the county executive to enter into an agreement with certain Orange County municipalities providing for exemption from county taxes, taxation of lands, owned and used by them for water supply and related purposes. Now, you may not realize this, and it might be an unintended consequence, but you may affect the pending lawsuit between the town of Woodbury and a certain municipality. It will have a detrimental effect on Woodbury in this lawsuit, and I'm strongly urging you to vote no. Thank you. Okay, next up is Scott Carpley. Agenda item number 12. Hello. Hey, my name is Scott Sarkley. I'm the owner of Next Level Kennels in Pinebush. Uh, back in October, we had a fundraiser to purchase bulletproof vests uh, for canines in Orange County. Uh, we worked through some of the things. We had some hiccups along the way, but we're here today in support of uh, 2008 003. It's a bulletproof vest for the Orange County Sheriff's Office. They're going to be giving it to K9 Roger. We're here in support of that today. Deborah Core, 23, 24, 25, 28, 29. Agenda. Hi, I'm Deborah Core's daughter, Jess. Coates. She's going to go after me if that's okay. I, I am signed up, I believe. I'm, I'm right up. Um, if you go to the Orange County Partnership website and you click under incentives, you'll see a seal for the Orange County government that takes you to the Orange County Industrial Development Agency website. Last Wednesday, I stood downwind in the middle of plumes of diesel smoke from one of the Orange County Partnership projects 
that has received Orange County Industrial Development Agency incentives. The CPD Power Plant, which is listed on the Orange County Partnership website as a success story. CPD is currently making headline news as bribery and corruption trial in full 60 minutes south of us. We keep hearing about jobs, 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 and game changers. CPD was a game changer, an unnecessary, unwarranted game changer that was never needed to replace Indian Power Plant. Orange County officials were brought up in the 2017 audit from the State Controller's <coughs> Office, specifically about the Orange County Industrial Development Agency and the funds, grants, and tax incentives it gives to projects like CPB and Millennium Pipeline. Orange County IDA officials could not provide criteria that was used to evaluate the projects. The board did not document how it arrived at its decisions to approve projects, and the OCIDA minutes only reflected that the projects were approved. This includes the Millennium Pipeline, which is supposed to hire 350 workers, but hired 27, none of which I was able to find were local. In addition to the lack of criteria for projects, the New York State Comptroller's Office also found that the OCIDA provided funding to projects, two of which were sold to third parties while they were receiving benefits. There's very little oversight there, and the OCIDA also acted outside its authority and grants to companies like Millennium Pipeline and Continental Organics. This brings us back to the agenda today for the Orange County Legislature, where you want to, you have several resolutions to reappoint Mr. Brescia to the Orange County IDA and the Orange County Funding Corporation, which is a nonprofit that is controlled by the OCIDA. Insanity is repeating the same actions and expecting different results. Lack of transparency is an inherent problem with any agency receiving government funding or operating as the economic development arm of any government entity. That is why I was glad to hear that the county would be establishing an official ABO compliant economic agency development director. However, I'm surprised to read that the Orange County Partnership will still be working hand in hand with the government, considering that they violated the ABO laws for six years. For six years, no one was able to foil the communications between our elected officials and the Orange County Partnership. For longer than six years, names like Project X, Project Black Box, Project Apple were being used at the Orange County Industrial Development Agency minutes. You submit an FOI request to the Orange County Partnership, they will give it back to you and tell you that you are unfoiled. That is a problem and it's a service to the taxpayers who ponied up hundreds of thousands of dollars to the Orange County Partnership over the years. I'm here today to express my concern about the generous salaries being proposed for the new positions, both for the economic development and the tourism director. When it was originally proposed a year ago, we already had an Orange County director. Mary McConnell touched on that, so I'll skip that. But I would like to know on the agenda of why we are going to reappoint anybody to the Orange County Industrial Development Agency and the Orange County Fund Funding Corporation without drastic measures taken to change the way they do business. The Orange County Industrial Development Agency could be a wonderful accelerator that helps foster locally owned businesses, but instead its primary purpose seems to be providing incentives for Orange County partnership projects. Deborah Corp. I'm here today to talk about um, farmland and what the economic development is doing to our farmland. If you uh, visit our comprehensive plan or master plan for Orange County, one of the major incentives is to preserve farmland. If you go to ag and markets, if you go to agricultural committee, um, you are supposed to really look at the soils and, and try to protect the soils, the good farming soils. But instead, we put Lego land on top of wonderful uh, farmland. We're putting Lego land on top of our Moodna Creek watershed. They want they want to buy the Otter Kill, which is a threatened estuary of the Hudson Valley, um, of the Hudson River, uh, and on the Moodna Creek watershed. Um, I don't know. Does anybody know that it's 9710 in the town of Goshen? Uh, it's a law that says amusement parks are prohibited in, in the town of Goshen. So you move here, you put millions of dollars into a farm, and you wake up on June two years ago to find out that Steve, Steve Newhouse has worked with FOMO to shove Legoland down our throats. In addition, we sit in traffic on Fridays and Sundays. Um, Everybody at like the last meeting I attended was Legoland, Legoland. Put it in your backyard. Okay, put it in a town that does not have a law that prohibits amusement parks in our town. In addition, why is a private entity on the first page of our 
um, Orange County government page. Why, and I've done this before, I've stood up in front of you before, why is the um, uh, economic development, you know, Orange, Maureen Hallahan's group, why is she, why does she get special treatment? Why isn't every single business in, in the county on your thing? When are we going to support the little guy, the little guy that's here struggling, that doesn't have millions of dollars to, you know, do the pay to play thing? Um, in addition, you just keep saying jobs, jobs, jobs. Are you aware that Orange County currently has, according to federal guidelines, has zero percent unemployment? Why do we need all these jobs? Are you just going to be, keep developing until this place looks like Rockland County or Queens? Which one do you want? Brooklyn? I mean, seriously, that's what we're gonna, where we're going to be. The reason we all moved up here and the reason we don't care that we drive two hours back and forth twice a day is because we wanted to come to a place that had still some rural integrity, a place that still had air we could breathe, and a place that we still had soil that we could buy farm products from and know where our food came from. Um, so no, stop Legoland, guys. It's, it's a really bad idea. You're really going to regret this in the future. Thank you. Okay, Majority Leader Benelli. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I move to vote collectively on items number four through seven. Okay, if there's no objections, that'll be done. All right, are there any uh, withdrawals, consents, or referrals? Excuse me, Chairman, yes, I'd like to withdraw number 12. Okay. There are no objections to that. That will be done as well. Okay, let's move on to agenda item number one, which is a bond resolution requiring two thirds vote. For the cities, Benton and Nagasaki. Bond resolution dated February 1, 2018. Bond resolution of the County of Orange authorizing the acquisition of technology, hardware, and software at the estimated cost of $1,122,000 and the preparations of surveys, preliminary and detailed plans, specifications, and estimates necessary for the construction of technology infrastructure improvements at the estimated cost of 285000 stating the estimated total cost thereof is 1407000 appropriating said amount, therefore, and authorizing the issuance of 1407000 bonds of the county to finance said appropriation. Okay, just second. Yes, legislator and Angus Dodgers. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I'll be in support of this, and uh, I think I just want to repeat some of the words that I uh, said at the Ways and Means Committee. Originally, this was a $1.5 million proposal for software enhancements. Um, part of that $1.5 million was $93,000 dedicated to improvements at Bountyview, and I made the rest of the motion within the committee to pull the $93,000 out. Um, and I just want to explain to everyone so we all understand what's going on with Valley View. Um, I made a couple of arguments. Number one, um, the argument was that Valley View is now, for lack of a better word, the financial powerhouse. Uh, Valley View uh, has a budget of $52 million for its operating year and has $47 million of reserves. The county has an operating budget of $745 million, and if the county was doing as well as Valley View is doing, we would have $700 million of reserves. We don't have $700 million of reserves. So Valley View is well able to pay for its 93000 of improvements. But the second point was um, a finer point, um, and I hope the administration uh, is listening to this, because I think they ought to be doing this from now on. We talk about this in my committee quite often. Uh, Valley View, when it actually does capital improvements, will get roughly 75% of that back as a Medicaid enhanced payment over the next couple of years. So if you're bonding out $93,000, uh, $93, over time that'll probably cost the taxpayers about $150,000 if you get it as a county. 
But if Valley View did it, it would get 120 of the 150,000 back as Medicaid improved payments, thus costing taxpayers only 30,000. So we should never have the Valley View operating expenses for capital improvements within the county budget. And Valley View, number one, can well afford to pay for it because it's doing great financially. And number two, would save the taxpayers 75% uh, of the cost. So um, I'm glad to have taken it out. I'm glad everyone supported that, and I'll support this motion. Thank you very much. Okay, further discussion? Yes, legislator, if I do want to be added. Okay. So be it. Roll call. Mary? Yes. Purdue? Yes. Emma? Yes. Manisakis? Yes. Benton? Keeney? Ed Young? Hines? Tulsek? Manuda? Rodano? Wiskevich? Sassy? Sierra? Virginia? Sutherland? Hotel? Yes. Chewy? Zero? Question. Oh, yes. And number two, which is also a bond resolution requiring the two thirds vote. Legislator Benton Benelli. Fund resolution of the County of Orange authorizing additional financing for the acquisition of software for the collection of unpaid taxes, stating the estimated maximum cost thereof is 492000 appropriating 392000 therefore, in addition to the 100000 Previously appropriated in authorizing the issuance of 392,000 bonds of the county to set to finance said appropriation. Discussion? Roll call. Finelli? Yes. Purdue? Yes. Nemo? Yes. Nagasakis? Benton? Haney? Ed Young? Hines? Ulisek? Menuda? O'Donnell? Ruskevich? Sassy? Sierra, Stiganga, Evelyn, what now? Yes. Two, zero, correction. One minute. Legislators Fenton, Anagasaki, Spinelli, Sutherland, Hines, Fulisek, Cadiz, and Minuta. Resolution making a supplemental appropriation to the 2017 Orange County budget from the Orange County Department of Finance pursuant to section 4.09 in the Orange County Charter. Second. Discussion? Majority Leader? Um, Certainly. All Democrats? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, yeah, just, um, just to make a quick point on, on this one, I'm uh, uh, very happy to also be a sponsor on it. Just for the new legislators that uh, are curious as to what's going on, because one of them did ask me a question on this after a committee uh, we had last week. Basically, the, uh, the county is doing very well. The economy is doing very well. Um, so we actually brought in over $14 more million dollars of sales tax last year in 2017 than what we had budgeted and the portion that we pay out to the um, municipalities in orange county equals that 3.759 million so they're going to get more than uh, they expected to get based on our budget but the good news is uh, and i said this at the committee also um because we just went and i had budget book then we took a quick look so uh we got 14 million more in sales tax than we had budgeted last year but for this year, 2018, we only budgeted $7 million more than what we had budgeted last year. So if the economy continues to go at current pace, and all indications are that the economy is even rubbing up to a higher level, we are even going to expect, hopefully, to have additional money than we budgeted for 2018 when we're here this time next year. So everything's going great for the county in well, I'll echo that. I mean, this is a good problem to have. Three three years ago, we were in a situation where we over projected our sales tax revenue, and we had to change. We had to tighten the belts quite a bit. So, this money is definitely going to come in handy for the municipalities throughout the county, but us as well, because um, I'm told that with this raise raise the age legislation, it could cost us another six million dollars or more. And you're shaking your head no, but we'll we'll hear in committees. Oh, you're shaking your head yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's we're yet to hear about it, right? Yeah, just like this, 
few other pieces of legislation that came down from the board. So, um, okay, any other further discussion? Okay. Anna? Yes. Please? Yes. Emma? Yes. Amanda Sanchez? Anton? Amy? Ed Young? Hines? Ulysses? Geneva? Bodano? Miscavige? Sassy? Sierra? Ganga? Sutherland? What down? Yes. Two? Zero? Fresh. Okay, numbers four, five, six, and seven. Resolution authorizing the private sale and conveyance of certain county owned lands acquired by reason of the failure to redeem said lands from the tax sale of Orange County to Section 10184 of Bill Property Tax Law in Orange County under Local Law No. 2 of 2010. Second. Second. Okay. Nelly? Yes. Kadeev? Yes. Amo? Yes. Nagasakis? Benton? Kenny? Ed Young? Hines, Kulasek, Renuda, O'Donnell, Savage, Sassy, Sierra, Ganga, Sutherland, Kota, Chewy, Zero, Russian, Okay, number nine. Website of Benton, Sutherland. Resolution authorizing the tenant debt to enter into an agreement with a certain with certain Orange County municipalities providing for the exemption from county taxation of land owned and used by them for what apply and related purposes pursuant to section 4063 of real property tax law. Second. Second. Uh, Second. Full set, Nemo, and then a negative side. And added. Okay, Nemo, added. Second. Negative side. Then no, I'm not adding. I want to start. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, so we had uh, a speaker come up and uh, tell us that uh, she thought there could be some conflict here with a pending lawsuit in um, the town of Woodbury. I would like to ask our attorney, um, can you clarify that situation? Is there any validity in that um, within this before we place the vote? I guess I can. Uh, there is litigation pending between the town of Woodbury and uh, the village of Pierceville with respect to certain uh, properties, uh, which are owned by Pierceville for the purpose of uh, providing uh, water resources, uh, and it would normally uh, fall uh, under a tax exempt status. For some reason, uh, last year those properties did not receive a tax exempt status, and that is being litigated in court. Um, and uh, just so you know, those properties were not included in our county's resolution last year. Uh, so that is for the past. Uh, this is going forward. Uh, I'm not sure if those particular properties are, are within our resolution. I think they are, but I haven't been able to verify that uh, because I just found that about um, this uh, probably at 3 o'clock. I did uh, speak with the uh, town supervisor for Woodbury. And, um, he does not believe that it, it creates an issue. He has spoken to his counsel uh, with respect to that. Um, and so this really has to do with the tax exempt status for county purposes, for county taxation purposes, and uh, not for any other municipality. Uh, so what happens in the lawsuit uh, will be uh, you know, determined by the court, but this is only always with respect to all uh, in the town of Woodbury specifically as to this issue here. Uh, but being used by uh, the village of Pierceville for a work research of services. 
when you're turned on, I'm turned off, I guess. Yeah. Doesn't mean that you might have a sound. Okay. Right. Okay. Okay. I have Legislator Tuttle and then Legislator Hines. Um, first off, I did invite the supervisor from the town of Woodbury to our Democratic caucus today, as well as council was there where she answered uh, his questions and mine. Um, she did relay most of what was said in the caucus to the supervisor, and I specifically asked him at the end of this if he was satisfied with the answers that he received, if he was comfortable with another solution. He said yes, he was. However, Antoinette could not guarantee, and nobody can guarantee, that there is no impact that this resolution could potentially have on a case that's pending within court. I, would you agree that it didn't set precedent? Is that correct, Internet? Yes, yeah, because this is going forward. I'm afraid I don't know, so I'm not sure. Okay. Um, this is going forward with respect to tax exemptions for 2018. Um, the uh, litigation has to do with uh, tax exemption for, I believe, 2017. Correct. They didn't tax that particular pipeline in 2016, uh, or that particular property in 2016, because the pipeline was not complete. So they did tax it for 2017, and that's what the litigation is standing from. They also anticipate taxing it into the future in addition to another line that is uh, being completed this year. So we don't know specifically if this will impact that loss of many ways. The only way we know is once the loss is completed. But I understand that we have to pass this resolution before uh, March 1st. So I personally, because I'm not 100% guaranteed that this will not impact the potential litigation between two parties, I'm going to vote no. I'm going to ask my colleagues to vote no or for us to table this until we can change it where it does not include those properties that are under litigation. Well, let me just, if, if I may, respond. Um, any court order that comes down, no matter what, um, would, um, would uh, usurp our resolution, so long as the court properly addresses it that way. Uh, so we have to carefully review the, um, the, the court order on that uh, and when it's finally disposed of in court, and then um, all the attorneys will take a hard look to determine how it impacts tax them status for anti tax agent purposes. That's all we're doing here today. And then uh, the determination will be made whether it will be or will not be tax exempt for 2018. So we can go along, uh, do our normal course of uh, business here, and then ultimately, if a court decision comes down and, and reverses what we did, we will abide by it. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I sit on the Ways and Means Committee, and I have the very same concerns as we're talking about now. The committee, uh, legislative council that's in the room at the moment, we ask a question, but so I directed my uh, question to County Attorney, Assistant County Attorney Matt Nothniel, uh, and I asked the very question, does this resolution have any effect on the litigation with Woodbury and the village of Carrie Joel? And he said absolutely not, it has nothing to do with it, and we're only talking about the county taxation, we have no authority to waive any taxes in Woodbury. We then asked the question to John McCarry, our director of real property, who is an expert, I think everybody agrees on assessments, and he said that the assessor in uh, Woodbury is within their right to uh, assess water lines and utility lines as they see fit, they can award exemptions as they see fit. So it seems like uh, it, it is proper for Woodbury to do what they're doing, but uh, that's only my opinion, I guess. But my concern is, and why I have to vote yes today, is because every other municipality, if we don't do this, is going to get a tax increase on their water lines. If you look at the resolution, there's a whole list, you know, in fact, that encompasses I guess you would say two and a half pages of municipalities that would then have to pay taxes on their water systems uh, for county land. And, and I don't want to impose that tax increase uh, from the county on to these towns that have a uh, municipal water service exemption. So I have to vote yes, and I'm comfortable because I asked uh, the county attorney at committee that uh, this would not affect litigation. Thank you. Let's put it down and let's put it in the next office. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, as the Chair of Ways and Means, this, again, was brought up to our committee, and I would have to agree with Mr. Hines and our, our legal counsel. As you can see, like Mr. Hines said, this program is relating to every municipality in the county who has lands that their land 
kind of Walkfield, kind of Mount Hope, kind of Newburgh, kind of Windsor. They're land, their properties uh, that we're exempting them for just the county portion. And it's the lands that they use for uh, wellhead protection, watershed protection, reservoirs. In the town of Newburgh, it's the land that's around the Tyler Lake uh, Reservoir, which was the, the former principal water supply. So I would have to agree, uh, but with our council's opinion that, again, whatever the judge in the black robe says goes for the lawsuit, but I don't think it applies at all at this time. And that we do not want to uh, have any possibility of these other municipalities getting uh, charged more than they have to pay for these properties. I just want, uh, for all legislators, uh, you and all, I just uh, to revisit the process that we have here uh, in the county with respect to these uh, parcels. Um, each municipality that owns plants that are being used either for water uh, or fire protection or sewer that are, and the lands are located outside the uh, limits of the corporation or the municipal corporation, they passed a resolution to, uh, to the county asking us uh, to uh, exempt them from county taxation. When those resolutions come, comes to the legislature, we then refer them to the county property uh, director, and he reviews each and every parcel uh, to make sure that those parcels are being, being used for the intended purpose, and he verifies the section block and lot. So we do our due diligence here. Um, to make sure that the parcels that are within the resolution are, are still and still being used. We check every single one each year. Um, so we do our due diligence and then he verifies it to us and then we put it on this resolution uh, that goes for the police need. So uh, it's not arbitrary. Uh, we do our homework and uh, we verify uh, that these parcels are entitled to the, uh, to the exemption of uh, the request. Before you go, I'd just like to say, if we were to strike any any municipality from that list, I'd be more worried about the lawsuit that we can incur from doing that without just cause mm -hmm. um, when they go to the uh, office of real property without justification. So, let's put our next dockets and let's sort of put that in the sort of CR. Okay, Mr. Chairman, we just what I was thinking. Originally, I didn't see a problem with this, but more and more that we're talking. Um, I agree, I don't want to see any of the other municipalities incur any kind of tax when they're not supposed to on a particular parcel. Um, I also agree that uh, a question was asked of one of the uh, county attorneys. Um, I've also been here now, beginning of my third term, ninth year, and I don't want to tell you the record of uh, what the county attorneys have told me and how often they've been right versus how often they've been wrong. So, um, having said that, um, I was made an offer, um, an amendment to pull out the Woodbury properties and make two separate votes, all other properties and Woodbury properties. Um, but I understand what the chairman said. I can understand why that could lead to trouble down the line also. So uh, I'm not sure what I'm going to be doing on this vote. Could council again? Clarify, you, you said in reverse that we would honor obviously any decision that is handed down by a judge. But in the same vein, could this resolution potentially be used by one side or another in a lawsuit to possibly, even though we're not the taxation, taxing this facility that the, this is affecting, could it be used in their lawsuit as an example or as a, a precedent? No, I, I'm not familiar with the pleadings in this case, so I would be remiss in answering that question. Uh, of course, uh, the, uh, the the municipality seeking the tax exemption is argued is going to argue it is entitled to the exemption. I think the problem here was we didn't request the exemption in time uh, because of the timing of the uh, the assessment on the property. So I think we have a timing issue, and they're going back to try to fix something. That we couldn't fix here on a county level because of the um, because of the time within which uh, the uh, project was completed and we passed our resolution. Um, so I'm, I'm I really can't comment. You know, someone's going to use whatever resolution we have for whatever purposes uh, they think is going to work for their benefit, whether the court accepts it or not. That's that's my issue. 
Okay, number 10, another bond resolution requiring two thirds vote. Legislators, Fagione, Hines, Benton. Bond resolution dated February 1, 2018. Bond resolution of the County of Lawrence authorizing the construction of various improvements at the Emergency Services Center and Fire Training Center, stating the estimated total cost of the is $800,000. Appropriating said amount, therefore, and authorizing the issuance of 300,000 bonds of the county state for sale. Second. Discussion? Yes, good. All Dems. Well, yes. Rob Tassi added, James Sutherland added, Captain Spaganga, Peter Kay, all added. Okay. Any other Yes. Emma? Yes. Madam Sanchez? Benton? Amy? Ed Jones? Hines? Kulisek? Juanita? O'Donnell? Miscavige? Sassy? Sierra? Spaganga? Sutherland? Watson? Julie? Zero? Fresh? Come in. Okay, number 11, another bond resolution, two thirds vote. So it said James Paganga, Benton, and Hines. Bond resolution dated February 1, 2018. Bond resolution of the County of Lawrence authorizing the acquisition of hazardous, inherited, hazardous material costs, stating the estimated maximum cost thereof is 700000 appropriating said amount, therefore, and authorizing the issuance of 700000 bonds of the county to finance said appropriation. Session. All Dems. Okay, Peter. Ladies, with all Republicans on this? I would think. Yes, thank I you. Think, uh, I Michael, um, Michael and Michael, I'm sorry. Roll call. Okay. Yes. Okay. Kitty? Yes. Kitty? Yes. 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 Magnus Dockers? Benton? Kini? Ed Young? Hines? Kulisek? Menuda? Adama? Savage? Sassy? Sierra? Ganga, Covenant, Hotel, Julie, Zero, Fresh. And the calls were drawn, correct? Yes. Okay, 13. Legislative Producing Tool Effect. Resolution authorizing the county executive to accept the proposed right of way dedication parcel on the town of Walkout. Discussion? Okay. Oh, I'm sorry, Jana, I forgot. Yep. Got it written down here, and look at Janet Sutherland at it. Please. Okay, roll call. Nelly? Yes. Purdue? Yes. Amo? Yes. Amanda Sackett? Benton? Keeney? Fedium? Hines? Kulisek? Menuda? Godano? Ruskevich? Sassy? Sierra? Saganga? Sutherland? Hotel? 
Legislator Benton Muscovich Minuta, on resolution dated February 1, 2018, on resolution of the County of Orange, authorizing the partial reconstruction of various county roads, saving the estimated maximum cost thereof is $1,300,000, appropriating said amount, therefore, and authorizing the issuance of $1,300,000 bonds of the county to finance the appropriation. Second. 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 Ellie? Yes. Padre? Yes. Amy? Yes. Manitakis? Benton? Amy? Adion? Hines? Ilsak? Menuda? O'Donnell? Iskevich? Zaki? Sierra? Paganga? Sutherland? Woodsell? Dewey? Zero? Zerksha? No, yes. Okay, number 15, number of number Legislator Finelli Cool, Sykes Benton, Paduke. On resolution dated February 1, 2018. On resolution of the County of Orange authorizing the removal of contaminated soil at various county locations, stating the estimated maximum cost thereof is $100,000, appropriating said amount, therefore, and authorizing the issuance of 100000 bonds of the county to finance the appropriation. Second. Second. Okay. Finelli? Duke, yes. Amy, yes. Mendesakis, Benton, Amy, Adrian, Hines, Ulisak, Menuda, Madonna, Iskevich, Sassy, Sierra, Sedanga, Sutherland, Putdown, yes. Dewey, Zero, Berkshire, Honeyans. Amy, the 16, the Madonna. Legislator Benton, Benelli, and Menuda. On resolution dated February 1, 2018. On resolution of the County of Orange authorizing the acquisition of building equipment at various Orange County locations, stating the estimated maximum cost thereof is $150,000, appropriating said amount, therefore, and authorizing the issuance of $150,000 bonds of the county to finance that appropriation. Second. Okay. Benelli? Yes. Padre? Yes. Amy? Menisakis, Benton, Amy, Adjan, Hines, Ulisak, Menuda, O'Donnell, Miscavige, Sassy, Sierra, Zanga, Sutherland, Porta, Sue, Zero, Birch, Clements. Very number 17, number two thirds. Legislator Kulisek, Penelope, Denton, and Sutherland. On resolution dated February 1, 2018. On resolution of the County of Orange authorizing the construction of building capital improvements at various county locations, stating the estimated maximum cost thereof of 500000 appropriating said amount, therefore, in authorizing the issuance of 500000 bonds of the county to finance said appropriation. Second. 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 Conversation dated February 1, 2018. Conversation of the County of Orange authorizing the removal of asbestos and lead from various county facilities, stating the estimated maximum cost thereof is $50,000. Appropriating said amount, therefore, in authorizing the issuance of 50,000 bonds of the county to finance said corporation. Second. Second. Okay. Oh, no, sorry, cut down. Added. Added. Okay. 
just, just to mention about this in discussion of physical services, we talked a little bit about putting a bigger project together, um, working from the city of Middletown at, at the uh, Homer Street uh, property. Uh, there's been asbestos debated from there a couple different times as, as a couple different projects. So, so I suggested that maybe we look at that parcel as one whole, instead of maybe we can work with the city of Middletown and have a study done and see how much it would cost to do all of it at once rather than piecemeal it, which cost the county taxpayers a lot So I'm going to be supporting this today, but I've asked the community, hopefully, that gets done and we'll see where we go from there. I agree with you, Mr. Chair. Thank you so much. And uh, this is one of the $50,000 projects that we need to launch. Are we going to get a point out in the past? It's an ongoing. Anybody else? Okay. Ellen? Yes. Yeah. Um, Valley Central and a, and a young man shot across, ran across the highway. Safe distance for me, but not that safe. And I'm sure that happens all the time there. Cops out, you can tell you. He thought it's even more than ice. But um, it's a serious situation. I just hope this helps um, the city expedite this matter because it is serious and we don't want to see any data happen there. Appreciate everybody voting. Okay. Ellie? Resolution on county legislature designating public location for the posting of public notices pertaining to New York State Open Meetings Law Section 104. Second. Nelly? Yes. Today? Yes. Emma? Yes. Megan Sackett? Denton? Amy? Sergio? I'm Wilson? Amanda? Donna? Sergeant? Taxi, Sierra, Sedania, Sutherland, Hotel, Two, Sierra, Fresh, Alliance. It's 21, I'm going to say everybody wants to be on this, right? I'm going to everybody with a punch on this one. Yes, please. Okay. Number 21. What so it is, Fed Jones, Amy Malvero, Cheney, Ganelli, Hines, School Second to Duke. Resolution recognized in February 8th, Black History Awareness Month. Second. 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 We're already out of there. Yeah. That's done. Yeah. No call. Anelli? Yes. Kadeek? Yes. Nemo? Yes. Magnus Sakis? Denton? Kini? Tadion? Hines? Gulica? Manuda? O'Donnell? Yes. Kiskevich? Sassi? Sierra? Sedanga? Sutherland? Rochelle? Two? Zero? Rochelle? Anelli? Remember the point, please? 
Thank you. 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 Thank while I have absolutely nothing against Mr. Brooks, I think he's doing a wonderful job in the past few years. Having worked in New York State Parks for nearly 10 years, I strongly feel that his background in construction development is not the best fit for Commissioner Parks. I recommend that this uh, be tabled and that the county executive re canvass for the position. The Commissioner Parks should have a background in parks operations. Coupled with at least a bachelor's degree in one of the natural sciences, leisure studies, parks and recreation management, public administration, landscape architecture, similar field, or a certification from the Council on Accreditation of Parks, Recreation, and Tourism for related professions. Um, the Commissioner should have a considerable experience working in public parks or landscape architecture, wildlife management, and recreation management. None of these qualifications were listed on the resume that I saw. Um, I only saw the one resume. I didn't even get a copy of it. I just saw it from another member uh, of the legislature. It, it's something I feel very strongly about having worked in New York State Parks. I've discussed it with some of the other legislators here. I, I make a motion to table this plan. OK, no discussion on the motion to table. OK, we'll take a roll call on the motion to table. Yes. Una? No. Manasakis? Yes. Anton? No. Amy? No. Adrian? No. Heinz? No. Alyssa? Yes. Anita? Yes. Adamo? No. Skevich? Cassie? Sierra? Aye. Sedanga? No. Dublin? No. Cartel? Aye. Two? No. Sierra? No. Fresh? No. Guys? Further discussion, Lloyd? Okay, regarding the uh, parks commission position, there were 60 applicants for that position. Myself, as a minority leader, got to sit down on one and only one interview with one applicant, Mr. Brooks. It's an I like Mr. Brooks, too, in the position he holds now as the deputy commissioner of buildings and grounds. He's done a good job over the last few years in that position. In fact, he represents exactly what we need to improve, maintain, and upgrade the buildings and grounds at all the beautiful parks we have in this channel. I talked with board members of, of the different uh, parks, the volunteers that work at the different parks and venues and found them to be frustrated, quite frankly, that all the work they do at the parks doesn't get the support they need from the county and their promise, which would look to be perfect for that position in that regard as a building and grounds industry. Uh, but our parks have many different programs which are run by some great staff and volunteers. They need a program coordinator in our parks commissioner as well. But nowhere in Mr. Brooks' resume is there a mention of any parks act plan. I've mentioned in multiple meetings, these are very important concerns and have been told they would be looking to possibly hire a program coordinator for the parks, which would give a direct line from the boards and the volunteers to the county, which is something that we drastically need. But isn't, isn't that what a, a parks commissioner's job entails as well? With no park background and being denied the opportunity to interview any of the other final four out of the 60, I'm not willing to support the component. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I thought that uh, Legislator Kutal made a compelling argument. I couldn't support the motion to table, probably because there was no time to move forward with it. 
But I think that the issue that we really need someone who understands the problematic issues is critical. And I'll take the county executive at his word of this time. I know how, how Mr. Brooks has performed in the past, that they will find program person who will help direct this, this uh, operation. And allow Mr. Brooks to understand to manage the department and continue. So I'm going to support it. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I, I, I kind of look at this at a higher level. I think Mr. Minority Leader to do um, it's a good point. Um, I too was a little concerned when I heard that he only had a chance to talk to one of the uh, candidates, the final choice. Um, but I take the county executive at his word that there were circumstances that happened this time around that uh, prevented us or we from having a chance to talk to anybody else. Um, I think we were at a meeting with the county kind of executive wide well, it's my concern. Um, I see this as a, a you know, separation of government here, two branches of government, equal, co-equal branches of government. Um, we as a legislator should have the opportunity, and the executive agreed that we should have the opportunity to interview multiple candidates before the final choice is made. So uh, I know that there was an exception this time around. I would support Mr. Brooks. Uh, but going forward, there'll be other opportunities to, to see if the executive follows through, and I'm sure he will follow through on his work. There, there is an opening in the health department right now, and I have see the health department in my committee, so I fully expect to talk to multiple candidates um, that will fill the health department uh, commissioner position. If I don't get that chance, my vote might be made accordingly on the floor. But this time around, I will vote in the affirmative. Thank you. Further the discussion? Just to follow up, uh, in all the discussions we had, it was mentioned by the county executive office that, well, maybe we were looking to rehiring a program coordinator, which we eliminated four years ago. Well, in my opinion, if we have a commissioner that has that background, apparently that's why we get away with the position. So, we need to hire another program coordinator to help the new commissioner. That's just adding another position that we haven't even discussed. Legislator Minuto, I'm sorry. So, as a registrar, I would be remiss not to change my subject. Uh, that's, I have no qualms with Mr. Brooks and Mr. Dean on the job and application plan work. However, uh, this is within the realm of parts of more protection, and there are specific degrees to which that could work. Um, simply having a construction background is great, but there's a different level that can be that. Would be saying that in contract would be another. So I have a very, uh, very mixed with this particular situation, and uh, we really do believe that we need to be hired by a great individual with a very specific background and do the program and understand what goes into being a part of the administrator and all the programs that are wrong. Okay, no further discussion. Welcome. No? Yes. Dick? No. Emma? Yes. Amanda Sakis? Anton? Yes. Kenny? Ed Young? Yes. Hines? Ulisek? No. Manuda? Stan. O'Donnell? Kevich? Cassie? Sierra? Sitanga? Sutherland? Okay. Here. 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 Orange County employment schedule to create director of tourism at the office of county executive pursuant to section 2.02 I one county charter. Second. Second. Yes. I'm ready to the tourism director position. This county spends well over a million dollars promoting tourism in Orange County, which includes contracting out to media companies. Our former tourism coordinator, 
We did a good job coordinating with other agencies. We worked in the planning department, was paid less than this position, and was in her job for a lot of years. The position title of director of tourism means what? Is he or she going to have a more policy-making role? And what policies are involved in tourism that aren't already in place? I would be okay with replacing the coordinator at a lower cost, but I'm not okay with a separate director. Thank you very much. Dr. Stephen. I'm going to vote yes to this because I think it's, it's critical, certainly, for the time that I'm on the region, so critical. However, the one troubling thing about uh, this one in 24 and 25, uh, combining it all on the, on the exact topics of economic development, I think that's true. Um, when I tried to do my research on it, I noticed that you, never see, you don't see any table of organization for this new department that they create, how, who we put to them and what the relationships are, which you normally expect when you look at the field. Um, when I look back at the tourism person, it's clear that that person had a lot of the field, the attorney, and the GPC, and the relationship. So I see this as sort of a amorphous department. I think I would have preferred that we start with constructing the department and all the work to go, and then fill it with the different functions that we want to do. Having said that, that's what I would have done, but I didn't want to do that. I'm going to support the field. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I think everybody knows how I feel about this in the community. I agree with Mr. Reno when he says that this should be a second order. I think economic development for the same community and tourism, and I would like to see the director of economic development from that department. Uh, I can tell you, in the last four years, this legislature has merged departments. We've had some superfo on general services and IT. We had Sarah and Miller around social services, along with uh, mental health. I would suspect that if these departments were in place over the last four years, someone would have said, let's merge economic development and tourism because it just makes sense. And here we are doing just the opposite, two separate positions uh, with, with apparently no overlap, as we call it, economic development and just the economic tourism and tourism. I don't understand the separation of that future. We have to work together. We have to do things we can. Uh, the director of tourism is supposed to be at grade 25. But our tourism department has four positions, and only two are filled. So we're going to hire someone at director level 25 to supervise two people. That is exactly the opposite of what we've done over the next four years. It makes absolutely no sense to me. What I'd like to see, and I know I'm going to talk about 24, but I have to, instead of 23, is an economic development director come in. Set up a program, much like I can legislate or email something about, and tell us, you know, why can't that person run economic development in tourism at the same time? And then when it becomes so overwhelming, which, and I hope it does, because that means the economy is going to be better than where you are, that they then have to bring somebody else in to support them. It just makes perfect sense to me. If you need the other person, to bring the other person in. If you, let's have that director of economic development. Because maybe the person who's going to be the director of economic development has a great resume in tourism as well. Uh, we certainly should, because I think economic development and tourism go hand in hand, especially in our time. Our economic development has been structured lately around tourism. Granted, we have other industries coming in and realize that. But for us, this is the way it should be. We do not think a great 25 individuals should be support clients and two people. I'm not really no, but I will support the economic development. Before the discussion, we'll say it's not out. Thank you, Mr. Minister. I never said it once. I don't feel that we should. We should be the one and same with the director of tourism, we should have a development, or with the parks. There's a specific degree for parks that involves tourism and tourism is a big thing. For your parks, they need to be doing that. I'm going to be doing it. So the Thank you, Mr. Chairman. It's a point of information from our attorney. I can't point of information from the attorney before I speak. Uh, am I correct that these two positions, well, three of them, uh, but certainly the top two, will not have to be or, or will not be confirmed by the legislature once we vote 
in the affirmative that is totally the executive decision at that point? That is correct. Uh, the uh, charter provides uh, which positions uh, in county government are subject to population charter legislation. This one is included in our uh, administrative uh, uh, Right. So to that point, that, that's what, that, that was my concern at the committee when this came up. Uh, not, not the concern of trying to have someone produce more economic development, not the concern of trying to have someone produce more tourism for the county, but everybody heard it. Um, but my, my number one concern that I voiced at the committee was the fact that should there have been, or should we consider as a legislature moving forward, started to change when this occurred. We're now creating departments and other departments who have to confirm that here it is not in this order, so we do not confirm. So again, separation of power, two co equal branches of government, and I start to get concerned if we start going down this path where we'll have more and more and more departments where this legislature has no say in that. So again, um, nothing we can do about this vote today, but it's something to think about going forward. I concur with you on that. I, on the economic develop director position, I said that in committee, and they said O'Donnell said that we could you know, polish the position down the road and then change the charter. But what we can do is, if after this position is appointed, we can change the charter. And next time an appointment comes up for this position, we will be one of our within our domain to do that. Any other comments? Okay, roll call. Nellie? Yes. Hadoop? No. Emma? Yes. Mamisakis? Benton? Kenny? Ed Young? Hines? No. Pulisic? No. Anita? Yes. O'Donnell? Ekevich? Cassie? Sierra? Seganga? Sutherland? Sutdown? No. Dewey? Sierra? Gosh. And I, Wilmot. Okay, so it is Seganga, Clinton, O'Donnell, Kenny, Mac amending the appropriate Art County employment schedules to create Director of Economic Development at the Office of the County Executive to the Section 2.02 I on Second. Second. Uh, regarding this position, I just want to mention that I was in on a lot of discussions regarding it, and I don't really see the need for another director position in the county executive's office. Legislator O'Donnell himself talked about how that was his job to be the deputy county executive. Um, I understand the growth that's happening in one county, and I need someone to talk to, our relationship with the partnership, the IDA, Chamber of Commerce, everybody who's promoting economic development in one county. I agree that maybe they should have enough contact us in the county executive office. Well, they have. Three they should call and talk to you now. Um, I don't know. I just, I understand what the need is here. Uh, partnership has done a great job. My concern is there's no budget to go with it. You don't have a budget. Are we just sitting there waiting for the call to come in? We're not promoting it in the county. That's what the partnership does. We're not giving any uh, benefits to you. I mean, that's what the IDA does. We have a lot of different people involved here, and are they all going to call the county executive's office? Or is the partnership going to bring them like they have been to Orange County, bring them to the IDA, and maybe have some more not the them? I really, I guess I can support this. Uh, you can change it if it doesn't work out. You can change it in, in the fall budget. So uh, I just have a concern. I don't think we need really that many more directors in the county executive. Y'all heard what I said before about this kind of rep, sort of reiterating and pull it back. I think you, you know, think about some of our members of the legislature and get your own parties, like the majority party to make this decision. 
I really don't know what to do here, because I do support economic development strongly and have for two years in the legislature. I think it's really good. On the other hand, I've seen some major faux pas of the member of the planning board of Woodbury, and we thought Woodbury Common, we thought it was going to be like the Apollo Mall up in Sullivan County, and we think it was a mass property. You know, what do we know? We just think about planning board. This is really run away from us, and we may have other ways that are run away from us. So I think we really need to rethink our whole economic development model if we're going to create a whole department to develop and do. I would prefer the county executive would have come forward as I said last to the plan. Because that's what I'd like to really do. Here's my table of organization, here's my mission, here's my goals, here I want to go with this. Here's some of the conditions. You know, and how do they make me feel comfortable to say, yeah, what part of this guy? I really almost know what this one, but I hear some more points, but not because I don't think we need it, I think it's not because of the courts in this case. And, you know, I think that's what we need to talk Any other comments? Uh, let's say the Pini, and then let's say the Minerva. Um, given the changes that are forthcoming in the interaction between county government, including this legislature, and the Orange County Partnership, it's important that this position be created coordinate and enhance the county's efforts and facilitate communication between all aspects of this government and the many, many entities that are involved in the process of attracting new businesses and, as importantly, keeping the businesses that already exist here and call Orange County home. I believe that more structural work needs to be done around uh, this position as well as tourism. And it needs to be thought out further and discussed, and we need to respond to what we have in front of us as a changing landscape. Therefore, I'll be voting in favor of this uh, creation of this position. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, as we've discussed in several committees, really what this position, the position is germinated from, is the mantle of responsibility that has come from the success of our county, and that responsibility has much greater on those individuals who are currently uh, performing their duties. Therefore, splitting this off into a uh, different position is really the way to go. I am in support of this project, or in support of this position, but uh, letting it get away from us, uh, I don't know I think success is about responding uh, to this. The success of any project that is proved must be responded to in time. Their own success and the growth of that is a testament to the fact that we get at it. So I'm doing it. So I spoke about this position in the committee. And the phrase of this position, I know we have created this position several years back in the city of the town. I spoke about that one this week. It's my belief that since the uh, all heard earlier, the sex act, I believe that far higher, and even better. Uh, the right person in this position will pay for itself. So I am support this position. I think that. Absolutely. Let's go look at where Ms. Kevich. Uh, yeah, I just want to state my support for this position. I think it is uh, not only important, but critical uh, with everything happening uh, with economic development in the county. Uh, I think uh, we do need somebody in house who can coordinate with all the various uh, economic development agencies uh, throughout the county. And I'm looking forward to having this person uh, at DME monthly to uh, give some support on economic development activity in the county. And I also think that uh, moving forward, uh, we will be working with this person and with the county executive to um, uh, develop a more concrete plan for economic development going forward. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. You know, it's going to give us a better barometer, a better pulse of what's going on in the county with monthly updates in this position. We're going to be working with the partnership, the IDA, the county exec's office, and, and even the chamber and the tourism director. As, as Joe said, success to success. That's pretty much what he said. Um, I think we definitely need it. We're a new, uh, new level of economic development in the county of Orange, and definitely see it in the sense. Yes, so thank you, Chairman. I want to thank everybody for their support for this position. As stated, I uh, held a similar position in the county debt service for over seven years. It's critical that we have one sole person to 
to go to to coordinate the over 20 different economic development agencies within our community. I spoke about uh, getting a train stop at Woodbury Common, so I'm hoping to uh, sway uh, legislative leader Amo to vote yes on this. It will certainly help with the traffic plan in Woodbury Common, besides putting uh, about $2 million extra into the forefront of our cities, towns, and villages. Thank you. Thank you. So, uh, yes, so, so too. <laughs> Yeah, I just want to offer my, uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman, I just want to offer my uh, support for these two positions. Uh, with the uh, Office of the Economic Development, that brings in a lot of industry and uh, things of that nature. Where tourism is, uh, you know, we're on the rise to the uh, new success, new success. But we also have to promote and uh, tourism is a separate issue. It's also in addition to economic health. And the people will be coming up with more of the low end, low income, and places like that, but whereas, again, we want to be a vaccine for the industry that is coming up with this local, the local high five. So I just want to walk in my ass. Thank you. Well, we're pretty proud of you. It's pretty random. That's good. You want to be out of here? Well, everybody turn off the speakers when they're done, too, Michael. I see you lose your on for the bit. At that point, I said that we see any, any some legislators got reservations, but I said we could always, if we're not happy with the results, we can always refund the positions. But I, I really don't think that's going to happen. I think we're, most of us, if not all of us, are going to be very happy with the results in these positions. Okay, everybody added it one. Five of wants to be added to okay. You know, I talked about it in regards to another position with the county executive office. Uh, I'm willing to give it a try, where I won't say they won't be hired at at the top scale, we, the county executive office sort of has a thing about hiring people close to the cap and then the argument about the cap. So let's see how good a, uh, an economic development person we can get. Let's see what kind of job he does. And as Mr. Berkshire said, it's, it's not warranted by how many calls they receive. Or, in fact, they have no budget to work with. So I don't know what they'll be able to do except receive calls. So I'm willing to go with it for now and we'll see what happens. Okay, hey, roll call. Nelly? Yes. Please? Yes. Amo? Yes. Anabasakis? Enton? Amy? Redman? Hines? Willisek? Kanuga? Udama? Ustedic? Zaxi? Sierra? Tiganga? Sutherland? 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 Two? Zero? Fresh. Amen. And then 25. Educators, Sierra, Sigenga, Lujan, Maluda. And acting that in the appropriate Orange County employment schedule to create the senior, senior secretary and administrative assistant at the office of county executive pursuant to section 2.02i, the Orange County Charter. Second. Second. Well, yes. Just one thing, I don't think there's anything in the committee. It doesn't say specifically for the economic development office. So see, they're going to have more work in the county executive office, whatever whatever they ask for them or her or anything like that. That's in the discretion in the. Uh, Eric, my mic. That's in the job description, isn't it? This is the administrative support yeah. assistant. Yeah, administrative assistant. What's the question specifically? The question is, is the duty going to be specific to the economic development person or any duty you guys assign? Primarily, I think you have to have the after, but as you've all seen in our office, we all share the workload, we go into each other's but mostly the work of primarily the 
Right now we have one look for us directly, and then we have two ladies who work for the uh, in front of the office to do all of our bookkeeping and tax. So yes, take care of the The funding for this is uh, $153,000. It's record for both positions. That's what's called out and committed. Yes, we, we, we are asking the monies that were put together for the partnership, the third team, to be transferred to this, uh, this operation, which will include both positions, which will be sufficient for the remainder of 2018. That's the uh, salary and benefits? Salary and benefits. Two positions. Two positions. Okay, further discussion? Roll call. Benelli? Yes. Padu? Yes. Amo? Yes. Magnus Nakis? Benton? Heaney? Ted Jones? Hines? Tulisek? Menudo? Adamo? Iskevic? Cassie? Sierra? Sudanga? Sutherland? Hotel? Two? Zero? Russia? One right. And then 26. Legislative side Jones, Seganga, Badano, Benton, and Benelli. Resolution authorizing the county executive to transfer funds from contingency to the Orange County Division of Tourism to the to section 4.09 of the Orange County Charter. Yes. In committee, I also asked about tourism's budget with two vacant but funded positions as to why they couldn't find the money within the tourism budget right now. We can get a direct answer on that, so I'll be voting now. Okay. Roll call. Finale? Yes. Did No. Amo? Yep. Magnusakis? Anton? Keeney? Ed Young? Hines? No. Wilfred? No. Amita? Yes. Odama? Kevich, Cassie, Sierra, Stania, Sutherland, Hotel, no. Two, Zero, Fresh, Nice, Warmers. So the sentence, the Ganga, Lodano, Wuhan, and then the Is this not present in the county executive to transfer funds from contingency from contingency to the county executive to the section 4.09 of the United States Charter? Discussion? Go for it. Discussion, you have to put further in the United States. Thank you, Mr. Stanner. Um, so I I want to say what I said in the middle, I understand the executive process is saying the 152,000 to be found for the two positions. And I understand there's a vacancy factor for some of the new legislators that's a little difficult to understand sometimes, but we're not hiring the person January 1st. Um, so if we hire them after three months are gone, uh, one third of that salary will be a vacancy factor saving. So, uh, but I don't know. Maybe we'll hire them in a week. In which case you've only got a month and a week of uh, savings. So if you take the 153,000 and if you uh, are going to bring two people aboard, you just think about it a little bit. If, if people come aboard and take a family plan and health insurance, that's 25,000 right there. Uh, Social Security and, uh, and pension plan for the state, there's another 10,000 or more. That's 35,000 uh, on two people. That's seventy-five thousand. That means you about seventy-five to eighty thousand salaries for two positions. Can't be done for this money. Uh, but we'll see what happens. Okay, roll call. Yes. Do. Yes. Emo. Manasakis. Benton. Amy. Edwin. Hines. 
Philosite, Minuta, Odama, Iskevich, Sassy, Sikanga, Sutherland, Plutko, Sassy, Zero, Correction, and Zero. The 2029 can be voted on correctly with the next to the main section. Okay. 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 Combine them, you don't, they don't usually read it, but you, you could read it. You just add funding corporation to it. You wanted to read it yet? No. <laughs> I think the, the public, the public should hear a bit of it. Okay, yeah, and just when you read it, just say uh, the, the IDA and then the funding corporation. Okay. 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 Is listing the on county legislature reappointing L. C. Brescia to the Orange County Industrial Development Agency to section 856 and 912 of the General Municipal Law and reappointing L. C. Brescia to the Orange County Funding Corporation and Local Development Corporation authorized to section 1411 of the state, not the profit corporation. Sure, sir. Sure. Finale? Yes. Produce? Yes. Limo? No. Nanasakis? Benton? Heaney? Fred Jones? Hines? Suicide? Canuda? Adama? Savage? Cassie? Gengar? Sutherland? Lopez? Two? Zero? Fred. Okay, number 30. Let's put it back there. Position appointing members of the Orange County Economic Development and Gaming Committee to the Article 4, Section G of the Amendment. Discussion? Make sure that the gentleman wants to respond. Okay. Roll call. Nelly? Yes. Please? Yes. Amo? And then Sackett, Benton, Heaney, Fredman, Hines, Wilfred, Benuda, Adamo, Iskevich, Sassy, Sedanga, Sutherland, Hotel, Two, Zero, Fresh, Thank you. And then the 31. In Russia, position twenty members of the Labor Relations Advisory Committee pursuant to section Article 4, Section G of the Legislative Amendment. Second. 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 Nelly? Yes. Duke? Yes. Reno? Yes. Amanda Sockett? Benton? Amy? Adrian? Hines? Kulitech? Manuda? Adama? Iskevich? Ashley, Sienga, Sutherland, Patel, two, zero, Bertha, Hanson, and the District Court. Before we go to public participation, I'd just like to thank Kelly Bradley and Terry Ian for stepping up to the plate and doing a magnificent job. Gene is out sick. It seems to be going around with Benelli, Vero, Bretcher. Antoinette's not over it yet, and, and others in the education. So. Thank you, ladies, for being a great job today. And without further ado, we'll go to public participation. First up is Scott Martin on public health and safety. Good evening, everybody. Thank you very much for. Uh, Are you on, Scott? I don't know. You've got to push the button. Now you're on. Uh, yeah. uh, thank you all very much for having me. Uh, Love to see you all today. I really, really appreciate the opportunity. For continued dialogue here about the CCD PowerPoint. Um, and today, uh, I'm going to be representing now hundreds 
of citizens who, because of the CPG's recent tests, have woken up to the reality of this plant and the millions of tons of pollutants, including CO2, methane, DOCs, and particulate matter that will be deposited on their doorsteps every single day, 24 hours a day, for the foreseeable future, possibly 40 years, this plant will be around. Um, and, and I want to just be, um, be, the, be a reporter for you guys. I want you guys to know what's going on on the ground. And so in that vein, um, the last time, 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 about the bald eagle uh, nest issue uh, with the pipeline construction. Um, uh, and uh, unfortunately, all of our fears came to fruition as the Millennium Pipeline Company completely ignored all the photographic evidence that we gave them um, and of the Eagle's presence, uh, commenced construction um, up to 80 feet from the nest, uh, disturbing it, and, and they completely decimated the main feeding habitat for this pair of bald eagle that have been coming back to this nest for at least six years. Six years, it was against federal uh, management guidelines that they did this, and it's completely illegal for them to have done that. And they, uh, as, of, as of yesterday, they are now back on that particular section of the pipeline and have started the horizontal drilling technique that they call mitigation, but it's actually much more invasive. Um, it's, it's, it's an absolute atrocity, um, and I hope that you all, uh, I, I actually invited Mr. Brescia to, to, come, to come visit it. I didn't get a response, maybe you were busy or sick, I guess. Um, I wish you could have come and seen that for yourself. Um, but anyway, um, you know, my report is, is for you guys with the hope uh, that one of you will choose to represent on behalf of your constituents the public health and safety by being the champion of this very, very, very important issue that will dictate a lot of what happens here in Orange County over the next 40 years. Um, and as the citizens of Orange County have to endure this frac gas plant testing, their unnecessary facility on diesel fuel, we're seeing huge billowing uh, trails of smoke going all the way down 84 through Newburgh, depositing over the Hudson River as far as um, uh, Warwick, all through New Hampton, the town of Goshen, um, Middletown, of course. Um, and meanwhile, the man <coughs> in Governor Cuomo's office who led much of the permitting for this facility is <coughs> on trial right now in federal court for corruption, bribery, and improper lobbying for this plan. Not for another project, not for something else, for this plan. If you listen to testimony from that trial that's going on right now, it's all about CPB. So that's going on. A corrupt um, building construction project is happening in our, if you could just give me a couple more minutes, sir, I'd really, really appreciate it. One I'll more give minute. Give me 15 seconds. Scott. Okay, 30? Um, yeah, I, I have a lot here. That, 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 that's the basis of it. You know, um, uh, the Prococo thing is a huge thing. I want you guys to all realize that that, that is why this plant is here. Corruption, bribery, and improper lobbying. And if we all don't stand up for it, against it, it's going to continue on the state level, on the county level, on every level of government. Thank you, Scott. We do have the opportunity to stop this plant, but it's, very but it's, but it's right now. Thank you very much for giving me a Thank you. Thank you. Hi, I'm Mary Dietrich from Middletown, New York. Now that the CPV plant is in test mode, I have four questions for you. I hope you will ponder them and maybe get back to the public with some answers. One, recently the CPV plant has been emitting huge clumps of smoke. Um, I asked questions about the smoke and I was told it's only a test. My question to you is, because it is a test, does that mean any of the test toxins emitted aren't going to harm us? Two, the record reports CPV officials say the smoke is steam from cleaning. If so, why are people telling me their eyes are burning and why do I smell diesel fuel as I am walking three and a half miles away from that plant on my walk at night? Three, I assume that the county department, some county department, I don't know which one, is monitoring the contents of the smoke and the steam. If they are, when will you let the public know what the county found in the smoke and the steam? Four, again, I assume the county has developed an emergency plan 
for when an accident occurs. When will the public be made aware of this plan? I want to remind you, many of you live in Middletown, New Hampton, Wayanda, Goshen, and neighboring areas. You and your loved ones are inhaling this so-called steam as I am. I hope none of them have asthma. <coughs> as elected officials who are supposed to be looking out for what is best for the residents, I want to know what is being implemented to monitor these emissions and to protect county air, water, and environment. I hope the county isn't putting their trust in CPV officials telling the truth and are monitoring and are actively monitoring these emissions. Thank you. Thank you. Under King motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. Okay.